Black and white is timeless. So in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I edited a black and white photo of Disney in Photoshop. I'm also gonna be going over a few conversion techniques to help you out along the way. The look I was going for was minimal and high contrast. So let's get after it. Hey guys, it's Dry and Disney here with another episode of Dingle Days. And on this channel, we do dog obedience, pet photography tips and tricks, and we track Disney's march to his first AKC competition. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I've already prepped this photo, cropping, basic exposure adjustments, and Lightroom to get it ready for the manipulation that we'll be doing in Photoshop. If you want to see a video on some of my basic photo editing techniques, click up in the YouTube card or in the description in the link below. So we have our image of Disney in Photoshop, and I'm going to be showing you how I convert it to a black and white white image. Some popular techniques include using the hue saturation adjustment layer and just desaturating the image. But we're going to be using the channel mixer to be able to target the reds, greens, and blues within our image. From channel mixer, we're going to select monochrome. And that's what's going to change our image to black and white. With this, we're still able to adjust the reds, the greens, and the blues within our image. So I'm just going to make some quick adjustments here. as I see fit for a look that I'm going for. Okay, something like that. All right, now if you wanna know what the constant does, that basically moves the entire histogram of your image. So if you adjusted the constant this way, it's gonna make your entire image darker. If you adjusted the constant this way, it's gonna make your entire image lighter. In this instance, I'm not going to be adjusting the constant. The next thing that I would like to do is increase the contrast because contrast is what's really gonna help these images and clarity is gonna also add to the contrast in our midtones. There's two methods that I like to use to adjust the contrast. One's being the most popular that you've probably seen in Lightroom or basically any photo editing software and that is your curves adjustment. It's not my primary method that I like to use in this instance, but one little cheat way that you can use the curves adjustment is to actually select this little hand right here, click and drag an image to modify the curve. And you can select, let's say the lightest point in the image, click and hold. All right, so I can reduce the brightness of the brightest point in my image just by dragging my mouse down. I can select what I would think would be a mid-tone and either increase or decrease those mid-tones. And the same for the darkest point in your image. You can raise it up or darken it. And of course, there's a traditional method of adjusting your curves, which is, you know, making that classic S-curve that you've seen so many times. The other method to adjust the overall contrast in your image that I actually prefer in this instance, and that is to actually use the levels adjustment. So new adjustment layer, and we're going to select levels. And from levels, I'm actually gonna adjust the darkest point in my image and the brightest point in my image. I am boosting up the overall darkest point in my image. Then I'm dropping down the lightest point in my image, but it looks a little bit harsh right now, so I'm gonna use the opacity to reel that in just a bit. somewhere in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is make a stamp visible layer. So now I have a new canvas to work on. I'm going to add a camera raw filter and here I'm targeting the clarity, specifically that contrast in my midtones. So filter, camera raw filter, select that. And here it's gonna bring up your basic exposure adjustments. And here I'm gonna take clarity and just maybe boost it by a little bit. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a photo filter. There's nothing special about this. This is just a normal photo warming filter that I typically add to my images. So just photo filter. Warming filter 85, density 25, I'm okay with that. The next thing I'm gonna to do to kind of round out this image is I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer, posterize. And it looks really, really scary. But one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the levels here. Maybe somewhere around there. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is make a stamp visible layer so I can manipulate this a little bit more. Shift, Option, Command, E. So now I have a new stamp visible layer. And with that, I'm gonna make my posterized level invisible. 
And from here on my new stamp visible layer on top of my posterized layer, I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm okay with 30 pixels, but I'm gonna change my blending mode to soft light. And the next thing I'm gonna do is actually lower that overall opacity so it's not coming on so strong. I'm good with that. Now, to make our black and white image just a little bit more timeless, I am going to add some noise. But because I reduced the opacity on this layer, I want that noise to shine through maybe just a little bit more. So I'm gonna actually make another stamp visible layer. So Shift, Option, Command, E and go to filter, noise, add noise. And from here, I'm okay with the amount of noise and you can make it as strong or as weak as you would like. Like currently it looks a little bit newspaper-ish to me. So I'm gonna lower that opacity. Rarely do I keep my opacity at 100%. But just to your liking, this image was shot with a Sony A7R 3 and it produces a very sharp image. So adjusting that and adding a little bit of noise makes it just seem a little bit more organic and not so sharp and in the digital era. I would love to hear in the comment section below how you get after converting your color images to black and white. Do you shoot with the intent of editing in black and white? Definitely be some value added to the community to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. Please subscribe or hit the notification bell to hear all our future content like this. And we will see you in the next video.